So let's, uh, let's look at this example. So in this example, first thing we want to do is draw a triangle, right? So we can draw a triangle any way we want to, but typically I've always kind of just drawn something like this. A, B, and C. Notice these are not degrees, so these are actually measurements. So A is equal to 63, B is equal to 22, and C is equal to 50. Gotcha? OK. Um, now. We look at this and we say, well, if we need to find something, we need to find a missing angle. And for the log cosines, there's two angle, there's two formulas that are provided for us. The one where an angle is at least close to being isolated is represented here. So cosine of a equals b squared plus c squared minus a squared all over 2 times b times c. OK. Now, should we just go ahead and plug in our information we know and solve for a? Yes. Yeah. Kind of. Depends. We could do that if that's the way you want to solve the triangle. Meaning, if you want to find, all, if you want to find cosine of A and cosine of B, because really, don't we only need to find two angles, right? Because then we can always subtract from 180 to find the third angle, right? So if your goal is to only use the law of cosines, then use the law of cosines twice for each angle. So you could do that for A, and then you're going to have to do it for another angle, though. Or if your goal is to use the law of sines, because you like the law of sines a little bit better than the law of cosines, which maybe at this point you don't know. But once we start doing some problems, you guys can determine that. There is a little rule you have to follow for a side, side, side. When you're doing this for a side, 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 you have to find the um, side length that is the, or you have to choose the angle that is the largest. So when we look at these side lengths, which angle would produce the largest side? A. a. Now in this case, we lucked out. Right? We actually don't need to rearrange anything. So therefore, we could go ahead and just plug in our information and then solve for A. Right? However, my point is, like, what if this was D or C or something like D? That, let's just call it C. Like, what if it looked like this? Well, then what we'd have to do is rearrange this, which I will talk about here actually next. All right? So let's just run with this A. And this is big C. So let's go and solve. So, since I need to show my equation of where my answer is coming from, I'm going to plug this information into my calculator. I'm going to make sure I'm using parentheses so I don't get things mixed up. And then what I'd like you guys to do is to go ahead and see if you get the same answer as me. If not, then we're going to want to walk around and see why your answer was different than mine. That is definitely a square. Yes, thank you. Good. All right, so typing this stuff into a calculator. And I'm getting a What does that equal to as a decimal? Okay. Well, that's why we maybe want to do things together. What should you get a decimal? All right. Let's go and check this together. Now, again, guys, again, we know what we're doing, so a lot of it is playing. What you get as a decimal? OK, so let's go and check it in. So if we do 22, maybe I typed something in wrong. I don't know. 22 squared plus 50 squared minus 63 parentheses squared. So I get negative 985. And then I divided that by 2 times 22 times 50. Oh, I must have typed something in wrong. 
Hmm. I don't know. So, sorry about that. I did type in something wrong. So, when I'm doing this now, when I solve for A, I get this. This is A. Make sure if you just do this information, you're solving for the cosine of A. Right? You should get the cosine of A is equal to a negative 0.4477 yeah. 27 dot 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 dot. But again, guys, remember you're not solving for the cosine of A. You're solving for A. So you gotta take the cosine inverse of that information. Oh. Are we good? Okay, I'll walk around and show you guys. But again, now what I'd like to do, hold on. So now what I'd like to do is, as I kind of finish this up, what I'd like you guys to go and do is we need to still figure out the rest of the measures, rest of the remaining measures. Now, how are we going to figure out what is cosine of like C or B? Let's just go ahead and decide on C. So how would I figure out what cosine of C is? I only have a formula for cosine of A. Is there anything wrong with me just swapping the variables around? Right? A, B, and C are all interchangeable, guys. So now, wherever I have a A, I guess I'm, some people are still not paying attention, so I guess I'll just have to revise that, because then it kind of gets confusing why I have to say the same thing to the same people. But anyways, wherever I have an A, we're just going to re replace it with a C. So therefore, it's B squared plus A squared minus C squared, all over 2 times B times A. Can you guys now plug in enough information to solve for C? And if you're OK with the law of cosines and you got the right answer the first time, there's probably not a big deal of doing it again. Yes? Can you also use the law of sine? So since we found the largest side first, we know there's not a possibility of there being another obtuse angle or being any obtuse angle, right? If you've, by the law of cosines, already found the largest side, we're not concerned. And I'll explain this. Like, the reason why is, um, let me see if I have room, yeah. So the reason why this comes up is, Look at two angles for sine. Sine of pi over 3 is equal to the sine of 2 pi over 3. Do you guys agree? However, which is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. However, the sine inverse of square root of 3 over 2 is equal to what? Ooh, that was only two chapters ago. It's pi over 3. So, the problem is, when you guys type in sine inverse on your calculator, because when you guys were going to do the law of sines, you have to use sine inverse. Sine inverse is only going to give you the acute angle. Sine inverse does not give you the possibility of the obtuse angle. That's why we have that ambiguous case. Like, if we don't have enough information, right, we don't have enough, we don't know what type of triangle. Like, we don't know if you have an acute or an obtuse angle. So, when you're doing the saw of sines, this is not enough, like, we don't know what this triangle looks like. Like, I drew this triangle like this. Is that what this triangle really looks like? Is really C 160, like does that look like 160 degrees? No, right? So the problem is you don't really know what the triangle looks like. We're just drawing a sketch of the triangle. The thing you got to be careful with with the law of sines is when you do the law of sines, that's why the ambiguous case happens because you only, your calculator only gives you the acute angle. You need to figure out if the obtuse angle also works, right? So it's nice about, since we use the law of cosines to find the largest side, are we worried about there being another obtuse side? No. We know everything else is going to be like smaller than our largest side. So we can now use the law of sines. So if you don't want to use, if you don't want to use law of sines for C, then don't. I'm sorry, law of cosines for C, then don't. We just figured out what A was. Now I am going to store A. Be careful with this. Even though I'm going to round this, to 117 degrees, right? Because I said you can use it to the nearest um, hole. Make sure you guys store this as, I'll store it as alpha A. Because when you use the law of sines, I'm going to use my stored alpha A over 63. And then let's solve for C. Um, so sine of C would be, so it's going to be sine of C all over 50. Now, hopefully, you guys um, can figure this stuff out. Alpha A times 50 divided by 63. And then we do sine inverse of that answer. 
And for C, you guys should get 45.207 degrees, or C equals 45 degrees. And then I would store that. So I do um, store alpha C. And then guys, if I want to figure out B, what do I do? I just figured out C, I, already, I just figured out A. Yeah, just 180 minus my stored answer C minus my stored answer A. So then I just do 180 minus alpha C minus alpha A, and I get 18 degrees. And should B, should A plus B plus C all add up to 180? Yes. So therefore, you can always check your work with that. And looks like there's a rounding somewhere in on there. Hmm. I'm getting 179 degrees. Oh, that's 117. Yeah, I, was supposed to, I rounded that to 117. I forgot. Yeah, so there we go. Okay.